It's December the 27th, 2018. I'm Dana, your host tonight. I'm also known as the Nuclear Proctologist.org. That's a very important site. I got a crazy, kooky, whack job story for everybody tonight. But it has to be looked at. And so, 6 p.m., usually five days a week, Pacific Standard Time. We are on the nose worldwide. Whatever your time is, you know I'm reliable as the sun. We like looking at the big 900 pound elephant in the room. And as we wave out 2018, every stream is important. And every one of you are important. Snow, snowman, that is. Just kidding. And so there's people here in British Columbia that are still without power all the way up until New Year's. And so we went through a big storm last week. We're, like, we're very vulnerable here in British Columbia. So we got some uh, film to share with everybody tonight. We're going to be talking about Israel, fourth biggest producer of weapons on the planet. Don't forget to like the video if you like the video. And the war machine has been going on for a very long, too long. We went from just bow and arrows to stuff that can blow up three football fields per shell. So it's, um, it's not a war no more, it's a slaughter. And there's, um, let me see, 21 suicides a day in the military, US military. So there's more suicides than deaths in the military during war in Iraq and Afghanistan, where you left millions dead, millions missing, millions unaccounted for, millions of refugees, millions of orphans to get 10,000 Taliban. And the numbers can get confusing. Don't worry. I'll tell you 500 more times, because, hey, I'm that kind of a guy. we got a great story for everybody tonight. And so I can give you the whole story in these next four and then I'll break it down. But this is the whole story, basically. Jim Stone. Now, the reason he thinks it's a false flag. First of all, Japan never had a 9.0. Because he thinks Japan never had a 9.0. We're going to look at that. He says the earthquake in Japan was not a 9.0. And so Europe and the rest of the world are looking at phony USGS reports. And he's an engineer and an ex-NSA analyst who allegedly proved that Fukushima was an act of environmental terrorism. That means there have been an attack. And when those reactors exploded, I knew, that because of my technical background, that there was no way that that could happen. So he says, and we'll cover this, now the reason that like, he's not a nuclear expert, but he's seen it explode and he was like, that can't happen. And so because of that, then he came up with a reason that the 2004 tsunami and the Fukushima tsunami were false flag attacks. He uncovered it all. We're going to show you. We're going to have a conversation. He says this building was destroyed by a nuclear bomb. Dana, Dana. Not by robots. Robots die down there, folks. That's a... A little pun on my side. Now, the reactors, he said, blew up by a nuclear device. Now, if a nuclear bomb is detonated in that building there, I know this is going to come as a shock to some people somewhere, but there's not going to be nothing left. <laughs> and they're not going to be out walking around on the fuel pool after a nuclear bomb goes off. But the reactor cores are stored at the top of the building. The building detonated because there was so much fuel. The reactor cores were stored at the top of the building. And so one of the first, biggest, most important lie about the attacks, the attacks. So he's calling it a staged event. I love conversations like this. 
Welcome, everybody. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas to those who celebrate those particular festive occasions that are commercialized to some other kind of thing this day and age. Welcome, one and all. And so what I just showed you is the basis of his argument is that, and this is, you got to flush it out because this makes a lot of sense what I'm going to show you. And so why did he get any traction is interesting. So he claims it's an attack also in a written article. We're going to cover that. Now, I want you to think about the basis of his argument on the earthquake not happening. If I can get to it. That the, now he says the Kobe earthquake and the Boho earthquake in 2013 were smaller but done more damage. Now, the reason that they were done more damage, even though they were smaller on the scale, is because the Kobe earthquake, which is the one he's going to use in the articles coming up, was on land and was 17 kilometers deep, was 20 kilometers away from Kobe. It was on land, on land, right underneath them. They were right, Kobe, which was a big city in Japan, where many, many people died in 1995 from an incredible, uh, it's a different type of earthquake, and we got some of that documentation coming up for everybody. And in the 2013, now he names them in the articles, you'll find the links below, the video, was on land also, and was six kilometers away, and was 12 kilometers deep from the big city itself. But the, all those islands there in Indonesia were shaken, and India were shaken very badly. So this is where his version falls apart because that's his two reasons. Now he claims because they were smaller, created more damage, Fukushima couldn't have happened. But Fukushima, by the way, lasted six minutes, not 20 seconds, like uh, the Kobe, which was, when you think about it, that's pretty amazing. But because it was 70 kilometers at sea and 29 kilometers deep. So it's a far, far, far away and it's not underneath the land, right? And so his argument, and everything else is based upon this argument here. As I'm going to show you. Plus he says a nuclear reactor can't blow up. And so this was the nuclear industry. And he'd done a lot of people came out with these kooky stories. Him and a few others got some traction. Now he blames Israel. And to bring that into perspective, Israel in the Bible you have to look at it that way, right? Because that's how Israel sees itself, the, the so-called, well, the rogue country that has consumed everybody else's land. It's by design, it's in the Bible, right? So they're, they're fulfilling the prophecy themselves. And so the Bible says everybody will turn against Israel ultimately. This singles the end of the world. And that God will come down and destroy the planet. And only the people that are in Jerusalem, which used to be the capital of one and then the capital of another one and the capital of another one. But it used to be the capital of Palestine for, uh, now I don't know how many years it was the capital of Palestine, but 3,000 years or something like this. Don't quote me, I know somebody's being in the comment section. No, it wasn't, it was 2,999, didn't it? But anyway, uh, Israel captured it and now calls it their capital. But because that's the Bible, this is why he done it in the first place. This is why he went back because it's prophesied in the Bible. So everybody will turn against Israel and then God will destroy the planet. Only those in Israel, this is why they're ethnically cleansing Israel and only want the Jews there. This is why they have this thing about Jewish and, and they occupy all the land in Jerusalem that they can uh, through any means that they deem necessary in order to fulfill the prophecy, right? And so then if you can get the world to turn against Israel and killing the Pacific Ocean because of the radioactive fallout could turn the world against Israel, you're, you're just fulfilling the prophecy. So anything that can get you to, to attack Israel and, and vilify and, and demonize Israel is good for Israel, the fourth biggest producer of misery, I mean weapons, I mean misery on the planet. And so I, I worked for the last several days nonstop on this. And it's not uh, difficult, but that's the whole story. Israel didn't do it. I love to blame them because they're crazies. 
I can I can justify that by the way, but I'm not going tonight. Now, and when those reactors exploded, I knew that because of my technical background that there was no way that that could happen. And so he he got a lot of traction and he wrote this article we're going to cover it. First of all, Japan never had a 9.0. Um, and that's pretty well proven by the fact that uh, that no buildings collapsed in Sendai. If you look at all the uh, if you look at all the uh, uh, tsunami uh, videos, that tsunami is ripping through cities that are completely unscathed by an earthquake. And okay. Um... Now. He's basing it, this is his article, to give you an idea what the damage after a 9.0 earthquake at least just looks like, consider these events. The 1995 Kobe earthquake was a magnitude 5.9. Now, I put the graphics in there, but it was a 5.9, but look at all the damage, right? 6.9, but look at the damage. This is his evidence. But once again, the Kobe earthquake was on land, was 20 kilometers away from Kobe, it was 17 kilometers deep, and Kobe was right on the fault line itself, right? And so that really knocks the daylights out of that particular story. Now, the 2013 Boho Philippines rather earthquake was a 7.1, 7.2, was the other evidence that he's introduced in this article. And a few broken roads is his evidence that is worse if Fukushima was a staged event. And then a building collapsed is the rest of his evidence. That's his evidence. Everything is based upon that concept right there. Everything. So it is therefore clear and proven that there was no 9.0 earthquake in Japan on March 11, 2011. So because these earthquakes had more damage as far as he... And now I'm going to play the clip, the audio of him also in interviews asserting these assertions because he sees this, but he says he couldn't find it. Um, therefore, it was a staged event. And therefore, the tsunami had to be staged. And therefore, the tsunami uh, in 2004 must have been staged also based upon his narrative right now. So when you look at it, originally, without the documentation I'm showing you, you start to wonder, right? But when you look at what where the earthquakes were to, then you realize there is a significance difference. Like, it's extremely significant because you're on land and on a fault line, whereas the, Fukushima was a tsunami. It was damaged uh, all the way to Tokyo. I'll show you that coming up. To shake Tokyo, he says, a second fake earthquake was triggered near the seismic station. And so he got a number of a seismic station. That's Now, so what he does is he just keeps digging a hole till you, don't, you stop listening. You're like, wow, that's a lot of information. That must be like 500 hours. And that's what he claims he done. So Europe and the rest of the world are looking wait for it, at a phony USGS report. Jim Stone. By the way, Jim Stone is not his real name. And when you listen to him as an analyst, he does so much stuttering, so much hee-hawing. The fact that he got any traction whatsoever is because there's just so many of these people out there. And when those reactors exploded, I knew because of my technical background, that there was no way that that could happen. Now, that can... Just to clarify this, he's the only, only person on the planet that has said those words. Oh, that can't happen. Lots of people said it didn't happen, but nobody said it can't happen. Because this is why you have all kinds of safety devices associated with a nuclear power plant because it could happen. This is why they have iodine tablets 50 
kilometers away now in some countries because you know it could happen this this is why there's six times more breast cancer around nuclear power plants because it's bound to happen so what i'm going to do is we're going to break up a short section of it it's not a long night tonight because it's uh i'll explain that coming up in a little bit for everybody has been i've been non-stop working since the last show because we got to get a lot of equipment up and running, and um, I'll get to that. And up. I agree with you. Actually, I have whistleblower testimony that told me that there was a nuke planted actually underneath Fukushima. That's what I was told. Uh, well, now, the, yeah, yeah. The, uh, I, I got it. I got the company that planted it. I got uh, the reason they planted it. I got everything. It's all on the. Okay, and and. <clears throat> so. Now they're saying he's got the company that planted the nuclear bomb and that she's had it from testimony, but she's just a blogger. And, but she got testimony. Now, so she's backing him up before he comes out and says that. This is really interesting as this progresses. The company that planted it was called Magna BSP. Um, I mean, I have them nailed. I got a picture of the nuclear weapon that they planted in, in the facility. So now he's got a picture of the nuclear weapon that he planted in the facility that caused the explosion. And when those reactors exploded, I knew that because of my... Oh, sorry about that. Now that... Billion to your left, he's claiming was blown up by a nuclear weapon. No, I'm not making it up. Now, if that was blown up by a nuclear weapon, there'd be a big crater about 300 feet deep, and the building wouldn't exist. Do you get it? And so he doesn't provide stuff like that. He, he's just, he's got his stories repeated at many places, which is typically of a uh, public relation firm, military industrial complex machine. Oh, sorry. The company that planted it was called Magna BSP. Um, I mean, I have them nailed. I got a picture of the nuclear weapon that they planted in, in the facility. And so when I was, like, I put these graphics and I'm, I'm thinking about everything that they're saying, trying, trying to understand what the game is. What they did was they sat there in Israel um, uh, they triggered this tsunami, and they sat there in Israel. <laughs> I know, that's a bit much for everybody. So now he's saying he sat there in Israel and triggered the tsunami. So he's blaming the tsunami on Israel. I'm pretty sure if Israel had done so, Hamas would have come out and took the... the but it's, no, we done it! It wasn't Israel! There's 10,000 of us, come get us. I mean, you got 5 million refugees, you get 10,000 um, 10, Hamas. You got millions and millions missing and, and refugees and dead and, and orphans in Afghanistan and Iraq for 10,000 Taliban. You got 6 million missing in, or uh, 7 million from Syria. Refugees, this was a few days after Fukushima went down, they went after Syria to get 10,000 ISIL. They're over in Africa to get 10,000 Boko Haram. Are, are you seeing any patterns here, or is that just me? There was 10,000. Russia went after 10,000 Mujahideen for 10 years. Has anybody seen patterns, or is that just me? Now, he's claiming Israel was sat there and triggered, waited for the earthquake, and then triggered the tsunami. Now, there's a story come out that they can trigger tsunamis, but you can't trigger a tsunami with a nuclear weapon that's going to have the capacity to do what 670 miles of the coastline with a 140-foot-high wave in some parts of it because it goes way up, right? But again, let's listen to that one more time. What they did was they sat there in Israel... Um, uh, they triggered this tsunami, and they sat there in Israel. 
Now, the reason he's singing that, like he's got a, his reason is. First of all, oh, sorry. when those reactors exploded, I knew that because of my technical background that there was no way that that could happen. So therefore, what they did was they sat there in Israel. Um, uh, they triggered this tsunami and they sat there in Israel. So all of this is because he knows in his mind, who's not a nuclear expert or any history with it whatsoever, waiting for the tsunami to hit. Um, now he's talking about he's waiting for Israel is waiting for the tsunami to hit. Uh, the reactors did automatically scram uh, right when the earthquake hit because. Uh, it's like these nuclear facilities are set up to be inherently safe. So because they're set up to be inherently safe, he says there's no way to have a nuclear meltdown. Therefore, it was a staged event. If anything like uh, seismically happens or anything electrically happens, the reactors automatically go into standby mode. And this happened at Fukushima. Well, what happened about 40 minutes after when the tsunami hit, is uh, is they shut off the uh, the generators, and so whoever he is, he's pro nuclear, and he came out to protect the reputation of nuclear, like the rest of the savages did, and they hid the crime, turned it into a crime by trying to hide it, and and successfully hiding it from most people even today. We are. Uh, deep into this conversation, trying to understand what's going on. Was this real originally? And we started coming across so many of these lawyers and manipulators uh, that are obviously, they could be from the stock markets, they could be from the mining companies, they can become from the military industrial complex who uh, all benefit uh, incredible amounts of money. Everything to do with nuclear, you got to put an extra six zeros behind whatever you had written there for what normally it's for. So it's a huge money grab, and they seen they seen their industry, their beloved mass murder machine, I should say. They they managed to get a uh, a uh, uh, a remote a remote uh, um, internet link into the reactor room, and this is reported in uh, in the Jerusalem Post. This company, Magna BSP, which had its uh, um, unrealistically huge nuke camera inside the Fukushima facility, also got an internet connection to that camera and to the guts of that facility that was in place all the way through the all the way through the disaster. And they used, uh, you know, either Stuxnet ran an automatic mode until everything blew up, or they administered Stuxnet until everything blew up, but. Uh, Oh, anyway. So, okay. So now he's he's claiming a nuclear weapon caused the damage at the reactors because they can't blow up. And so I'm going to show you the reactors quickly. We're not going to dwell on it too much tonight. I put out a video last week of Fukushima Facts, and that uh, shows you. It's just a few videos back, and you'll find it. This is Reactor 1. Now this caught fire and blew up, and blew up, caught fire. There was a million sievers, but does that look like a nuclear bomb went off to you? Does that look like a nuclear bomb went off to you? By the way, it takes five sievers as a lethal dose. A million sievers, it'll kill you from football fields away. This is gamma shine, x-rays, and neutron bursts. Now Stone, whoever Stone is, would have known that. This is reactor two. That steam is lethal. It's lethal. You die right away. It drops you like a sniper around. This is reactor three. It was a big explosion. Massive explosion. But you can see what's left. When you have a nuclear bomb go off, and it should look like the building to the right, which is unit two. Then the building to the left, does that look like a nuclear weapon blew it up to you? Because it certainly doesn't to me. Now, he also blames this nuclear weapon, the, not the material from the reactors, but the nuclear weapon for causing the radioactive fallout. Now, this year they were showing people up walking on top of that building that, by the way, doesn't even exist. 
A billion to your left and a billion to the right was just about a month ago was the picture of the billion to the right claiming they're in the billion to the left. But that still doesn't mean a nuclear weapon, even though they're faking it, like Jim Stone is faking it. So they're not on top of Reactor 3, because that's Reactor 3 to the right. So the building to the right, did that blow up by a nuclear bomb is the question, right? That's reactor three. So the building to the right, does, do you think that was blown up by a nuclear bomb? That detonated and blew out the side, but that wasn't a nuclear bomb. That's, so a nuclear bomb would have left nothing behind. Now this is reactor three one more time. So do you think that was a nuclear bomb? If you do, then you're going to favor Jim Stone's version. And if you don't, then you have to consider what I'm saying. Now here's building four to your left. Do you think that was destroyed by a nuclear bomb? Look at that. This is what's actually left of it. Do you think that was destroyed by a nuclear bomb? Now a nuclear bomb would leave nothing whatsoever there. There'd be nothing left whatsoever behind. Not that there's anything left behind, but there'd be nothing left behind. Okay, let's go back. And so, right after the quake, but before the tsunami, smoke was seen rising from Fukushima Daini. From Fukushima Daini. We have numbers of... Uh, Radioactive, uh, them running away and, and being ordered to go back to Daini, which is a separate nuclear power plant 10 miles away. It's a twin stepbrother, the twin ugly stepbrother of the Diachi. Okay. So, the 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami. The Epic Center was approximately 70 kilometers east of Tohoku, and the uh, hypo center of the underwater dipped approximately 29 kilometers, 18 miles. The earthquake moved Honshu, the main island, eight feet. Eight feet. Now, eight feet is enough to separate the water intake for the reactors. This is why they've seen smoke at the dining before the tsunami. Because the earthquake disabled the power plant's ability to get water, so they're going to melt down. They're going to, when they melt down, they'll melt through it, and the water that's there already, when the fuel hits that, it creates the hydrogen. That's, when you, that's why you've seen the hydrogen, and that's why they blew up, is because it had melted through, come in contact with the water, creates the hydrogen, the H3, and then that, when it, when it's, it displaces the oxygen as it's filling up the uh, interior, then when oxygen is introduced to it, it detonates. It just needs oxygen. <clears throat> now, they got the earthquake in Japan, in Tokyo. It lasted for six minutes. And it's well documented. But he says that was done by another... So he's, he's just in that conversation, he's alluding that he's claiming the first one is done by nuclear weapons. And then he said he set off another nuke. And then, then the tsunami in 2004 must have been done the same way so we've got that in there we'll play that coming up now once again his whole story is based upon the kobe and boho earthquakes being much more damaged but less intensity than fukushima's was but the distance from populations were extraordinary compared to each other and so it's a 100 percent on purpose deception the Great Hanshi Earthquake, or a.k.a. Kobe Earthquake, occurred on January the 17th. It uh, was known as Hanshi. And you can see to the right, 
It's right on land. So the great Henshi Kobe earthquake belonged to a third type called an inland shallow earthquake. Inland shallow earthquake. And earthquakes of this type occur along active fault lines. Kobe was right on the fault line. If you look it up, then you'll see why I'm saying a sm even a smaller earthquake, because it's right on a fault line, will do extraordinary damage. And so he played everybody's unlikelihood to go check it out against them. And then that will play against people like me. So people like me, I've been spammed. Dana, what about Jim Stone? Dana, Jim Stone says I was a stage event. Okay, I want to tell you 500 more times, you better listen. But I've showed the evidence, but now I decided, well, I better do a better job. And so the Great Hanshi earthquake in the southern part of Japan combined with the blah, 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 blah. So that's some pictures of the damage. You can see the damage was extraordinary. The tremors lasted for approximately only 20 seconds. Fukushima was six minutes. So he's using people's ignorance and inability to flush it out themselves against them. And so when you look at this kind of damage, this is very visibly visible, but they didn't have a tsunami come through and wash everything away either, did they? Fukushima had a tsunami come through there and washed everything away. Well, 670 miles of the coastline, once the tsunami hit, everybody forgot about the earthquake, but they had something like a thousand aftershocks after. So Kobe, it was right on a fault line. And as you can see, the damage and its position is totally different than Fukushima. And so it's amazing damage. And so I can see why people fell for it. I get that. But the earthquake in Japan was a powerful tsunami that reached 40 meters, 133 feet. And it was offshore. And the tsunami... And so Kobe was right on land, rather. And the focus of the earthquake was 17 kilometers beneath its epic center and 20 kilometers away from the city. So just to overdo it, 17 kilometers beneath. So it's on land. And it's on a fault line is what I'm saying. The tremor lasted for approximately 20 seconds. The focus of the earthquake, blah, 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 blah. And when those reactors exploded, I knew, that because of my technical background, that there was no way that that could happen. If it didn't have an earthquake, what what's your uh, position? What did it? Well, have? well, obviously, um, I don't know if, if any of your readers have ever heard of Joe Vials. Um, I have a link to one of his articles uh, that he did on uh, on uh, Indonesia and that tsunami there, which was originally reported as a 6.3 earthquake. Then it got bumped to like an 8. Then it got bumped to a 9.1 for, for tsunami effects. Oh, so that's, that is so interesting because now we're talking about... Well, uh, India um, got onto this and, uh, and studied the seismograms, and they determined that, uh, that it was a nuclear weapon that set it off. And they also captured the EMP signature of, of that uh, nuclear detonation, which happened off the, off the coast of Indonesia. So he's bringing that into the conversation to support his assertions. And when those reactors exploded, I knew, because of my technical background, that there was no way that that could happen. Right, and so in order now to convince people that that tsunami was fake, why not introduce the other one as fake and bring in somebody's first name? Have you read their article? What? They don't even have a name. They got one name. And when those reactors exploded, I knew, because of my technical background, that there was no way that that could happen. So the 2013 Boho earthquake, the magnitude of the earthquake was recorded at 7.2. The epic center, center was 6 kilometers, and its depth of uh, focus was 12 kilometers. The magnitude was recorded at uh, 12 kilometers. And it, it, there's numbers will go back and forth, but generally it was on land. It was right underneath them. And the city was right there. So 
It got destroyed because, you know, it, the city was built on a fault line. That's not what happened to Fukushima. Fukushima wasn't on that particular fault line. It's, uh, no doubt it's on a fault line. Can the you Earl. explain, did the nuke hit before or after the tsunami? Did the nuke oh, hit? Way after the tsunami. Um, it took them a long time to get Reactor 3 to act up in a way that, uh, that was convincing. Um, the camera was specifically designed to uh, give them radiation readings and temperature readings off the reactor. Um, so they knew when, uh, when, when enough mayhem had broken loose to provide plausibility for an explosion, and, and they set it off. Um, if you look uh, at... Boom! Blew the whole thing up! That's what Jimmy says. Woo! That's what Prozac was designed for, people like that. So, the Kobe earthquake, the 2013 Boho earthquake, is his, everything is based upon that. Plus, there was no way a nuclear a reactor could melt down. Right? So the story's got so many holes in it. Just if it was a boat, you all just you wouldn't be able to get it to float in the first place. Now Fukushima number two rods fully exposed. Now the interesting thing about this story was if you look at the bottom paragraph, water levels had fallen sharply, but only one out of the five fire trucks were working. So when the meltdown was happening, only one out of the five fire trucks was working. This is the reason they melted down. There was no water going into the reactor. The smoke was seen coming. Um, the company that planted it was called Magna BSP. Um, I mean, I, and when those reactors exploded, I knew, because of my technical background, that there was no way that that could happen. Roger that. He's probably military. Okay, for the second story. Now, this came out the, se the day after to support them. Fukushima contamination uh, hype, facts are fear porn. Fukushima contamination hype, facts are fear porn. So he shows this map here and says the following image represents tsunami wave heights, not radiation levels. Now, this is a fake map that you'll find on all the fake sites out there. But Noah produced that map. But Noah did produce a map to your right of the radiation fallout. So it's, con it's very convincing or very convenient that Frank to the left and that these people are not uh, able to find the actual map of the radiation but come out and call people fear porn for having a tsunami map. So there have been claims of higher... Geiger counter readings in the Pacific Northwest. Yeah. By the way, computer simulation shows how radioactivity is. Now this is Japan explaining that, but this article was written the day after Jim Stone's article. Spread around the world from the disabled Fukushima Daiichi plant. The simulation was created by a group of researchers. Of so let's go back to that one one second. According to Jim Stone, oh, I'll get it. The nuke that destroyed Reactor 3 did indeed produce particles that were blown eastward and are most likely to end up in the North American river beds. End up in North American river beds. Like, so he's saying... The nuke that blew up, its radiation, not the blown up, melted down reactor, but the nuclear radiation is what came to North America. Yeah? Now you're starting to see what Jim Stone is all about. And um just going to come over and show you Unit 3 again, which they claim a reactor blew up. Anytime you're ready, Dana. Yeah, 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 give me a second here. Well, there it is. Here. So they claim the building you're looking at, 
this is reactor three, was blown up by a nuclear weapon, and the radiation from the weapon, not the melted reactor, is what showed up in the North American riverbeds. And so, woo! You talk about a weak argument and a weak story. Oh, so we knows where we're supposed to be, too. Hang on. Shouldn't do that, but it does. Now, I'm going to play. This is Japan showing the radioactive fallout, not of the nuke weapon, but of the melter reactors, or just the venting. The simulation shows how radioactivity is spread around the world from the disabled Fukushima Daiichi plant. The simulation was created by a group of researchers of, at the University of Tokyo and Kyushu University and released on Wednesday. The simulation is based on the scenario in which contaminated air was vented from the disabled number two reactor building on March 14th, three days after the massive earthquake and tsunami. Computer images show the radioactive material was lifted 5,000 meters into the air. It was then carried by westerly winds and spread over the Pacific Ocean. The images indicate that on the fourth day after the being, being vented, the substances reached the west coast of the United States, and on the, on the seventh day, they approached Iceland after crossing the Atlantic. The radioactive material was lifted five... And so you can see it covers the whole ocean and the continent. So the, now they don't include all the uranium isotopes. The nuke that destroyed reactor three did indeed uh, produce particles, the nuke not the reactors see see how the game is played look over here but not over there according to jim stone the engineer and ex nsa analyst who proved that fukushima was an environmental terrorism done by israel of all people which is convenient for israel here's reactor three they're claiming it now we know it blew up because of the the hydrogen but it's not a nuclear explosion. There'd be no shell left whatsoever, and they wouldn't be pretending they're up walking on it when it doesn't even exist, obviously, right? Which is what they're exactly what they're doing. Now, the plume wasn't just followed to the river beds, which is what the idea was to distract you from the studies that came out like this. One million Beckwells a square meter over the West Coast. This is not... Um, going to go away anytime soon. This will be here long after the human experience. we got to deal with what's happening to us. This isn't good, but neither is the end of the world, where one considers that many Cold War nuclear test detonations. But they are nothing like a nuclear meltdown. A nuclear meltdown does stuff like this. Rain with 20 million, million. Now, 55, not million, but 55, like the number of people that fit on a bus, is an evacuation zone. 20 million of iodine-131, which is a fission product from the chain reaction, so is 132 and iodine-133 and iodine-129. There's 10 times more iodine-132 for every iodine-131 produced. There's 30 times more iodine-133. There's 31 times more iodine-129 for every iodine-131 produced. And the, the significance of that is they're going to be in that same leader. They didn't tell you that, did they? Plus all the other isotopes. But the 132, 133 iodines are 10 times more effective at ionizing and radiating the thyroid gland than the 131 is. And the attack upon your thyroid lasts your entire life. And so you might not get the thyroid issue. Now, what your, iod what your thyroid does is it takes this particular iodine, sucks it up. But what does it do? Do, what does it do at that point? Oh, it causes problems, Dana. Yeah, but the, what it does is it tries to convert that into hormones. So instead of natural, harmless, and innocuous, and benign iodine that is indigenous and everything on the planet is already acclimated to through genetic superior selection, you're going to try to take the man made ionizing dirty bombs and convert it into a hormone. And so it can cause a moderate of problems throughout your entire body. And there's up to 1,800 illnesses and diseases and autoimmune deficiencies and injuries associated with it, including Alzheimer's and dementia. Six out of 10 children in Fukushima with diabetes. Six out of 10. 
And it's like the attributes of nuclear is you have an accident, you run away, and you never come back. You abandon your communities, your graveyards, your legacies. Your children have nothing. You have nothing. You have no friends. They're, everybody's separated forever. And the industry makes a killing trying to pretend they're going to clean it up. The article from GardnerCounter.com traces high readings in California to naturally radioactive sand. But meanwhile, there was tons of studies showing the radioactive fallout. And they knew this would happen. And so the idea was to brainwash and get people to look away and not pay no attention. 220 million per liter of rainwater. Do you get what a rain is, where it goes, and how it works, and why? It's normally it's the most important thing imaginable is rain. You need rain in everywhere. All the plants need it. All the, the, everything needs rain. The whole ecosystem, all 8 million species. So when you saturate all 8 million species a single time with these kind of numbers, so you're not talking about all the other isotopes. You're not talking about americium, neptunium, the strontium. You're not talking about the plutonium. You're not talking about the thousands of other fission products in these conversations. That is a serious flaw in the future of humanity and the other 8 million species. In some parts of Iran, people thrive in the radioactive norms much higher than any in the United States. Yeah, but your body can't See, it's called homeostasis. Your body can only accumulate what your body it can use. It's because we're, we're acclimated to the normal stuff through genetic superior selection. But man-made, we bioaccumulated. We, we, we uh, sequestered into our muscles, our organs, and our bones. But we can't get any extra natural stuff in our body than we already have. Our body rejects it. It's homesis. It's homeostasis, rather. It, homesis is is only applicable to the natural stuff, is not applicable to the man-made. So in all the studies and all the experiments on animals, and billions and billions of dead animals, they've never cured an animal. 1,500 atoms, we don't get um, these numbers or these atoms in nature. These are from a meltdown. These are dirty bombs. This is what you would expect from dirty bombs, per se, if you're not familiar with the other stuff. 1,500 atoms of radioactive sulfur, the sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyballs from the 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperature spraying salt water on these reactors, which is insidious. You need a million gallons a minute to cool the reactor under normal conditions at like 1,200 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. When it hits 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures, you can't cool it. That's show and tell for the cameras to pretend they got it. Every, but the helicopters couldn't even go in there. Stone makes another good point in Washington. The state police cars are equipped with Geiger counters. You hear that? Stone. Sam and Jim Stone making all these points. Which still sometimes detected. Now, so we're still on Jim uh, the, the dummy stone. The background radiation region is not spiked because of Fukushima. Otherwise, the cops and Geiger counters would be jammed and useless. No, your Geiger counters don't become jammed and useless if you have radioactive fallout. It's like California tends to concentrate in the testicles, 360 plus atoms of radioactive sulfur per day being inhaled. I meant you inhaled plutonium and uranium and all the daughters of strontium. And Geiger counters would be jammed and useless for detecting cancer patients. So, like, th these are arguments for people that are incapable of having a normal conversation and that once they start waking up and understanding the law, they're going to become really angry with these people. And that's what we are trying to do. Now, that map is the radioactive fallout map by NOAA, the American government's map. It's based upon venting. It's not based upon the destroyed reactors as I showed you earlier in the live show. Some particles from the liberated core of reactor 3 have been found their way to North America, but really does not begin to approach the hype. Yeah? Well, I just showed you all the evidence, all the studies. You only need one of these, right, to go like, that's the end of their theory, their story, their version. I show you multiple, legitimate. The Pacific took its worst hit when reactor 3 exploded. Now, Jim Stone didn't say that in the other, in his conversations, right? 
in his article, but he's saying in this article it covers some more bases. Sending a portion of fuel downwind, downwind, downwind. Like when you hear the word downwinders, that's people who just never thought about, because um, downwinder means the wind only goes, the radiation only goes one way. The radiation go all the way out to sea and blow all the way back again. I can do that for infinity because there's so much of it coming out because they're melted down. They're releasing it continuously. The, the, the ground is cracked at the site in six places confirmed. It's coming up at 10 sievers. Steam, not steam, but radiation looks like steam in right conditions because a lot of times you won't see it unless there's the right conditions. But it's been going on for years. These are lethal doses. And so they coat everything on the site gets coated with a lethal dose. This is forever. Radiation like this is forever. These numbers are forever. These are lethal doses. So you're not going to see Harvard University or Jim Stone or Yale University or Stanford University or Oxford University within 10 miles of these places ever. These are lethal doses all over this whole area from the radioactive. Water happened to be, an, uh, uh, this is another one of their, water happens to be an ideal radiation sink which it boils like the fuel pools at these reactors. They keep the reactor cores in the pools at the top of the buildings. And um, they boil off 120,000 liters a day into the community just from residual heat. 120,000 liters is boiled off into the community. Special water, too. These are insidious creatures. And... So this way, seeing these incredible diseases and illnesses and autoimmune deficiencies around the nuclear industry within 50 miles of it, you're going to see a spike in heart problems and liver problems and lung problems, and respiratory problems, pituitary and thyroid and adrenaline gland problems. You're going to see spikes in diabetes and Alzheimer's and dementia and autism. 40 million Beckwells in a single bed of kelp because it runs downhill to the coastline and aggregates in uh, natural places like kelp, which aggregates iodine in particular. But you also would have found uranium, plutonium, all kinds of hot particles. It takes only a fuel pool with a little water to soak up all the radiation and then it's boiled off up to the, the chimneys into your communities where you're seeing six times more breast cancer around nuclear power plants. Consider also the many nuclear tests conducted in the Pacific during the Cold War. In that context, are we to believe that a bit of fuel from one reactor core, one, I showed you earlier, all the reactors were melted down, four of them, could destroy the entire ocean. Well, a meltdown is forever. It's consuming rocks and steel and rebar and mud and water 24-7. It's the ionizing and radiating and atomizing and aerosoling that into the environment nonstop. These are lethal doses all over the site because that's what, exactly what it's been doing. It never stops. And so the water is pouring down on it goes down into the earth because you can't get near it. It's a lethal dose. It's a sniper around. And that's washed out into the coastlines. And then that's liberated through convection and evaporation into the environment and distributed worldwide, not just from the ocean. See, like a gram of this is 77 times 78 billion atoms. And each atom can give someone a cancer 10, 20, 30 years down the road. But when you're getting all kinds of these into your all different and uh, types of it die off of birds all over the Alaska beaches. They seem to be starving, starving, starving. And we've seen two examples of a half a million birds, Cassini oclets and the common murs. And the common murs, half a million of them, they can dive 600 feet down. They feed on anchovies and squid and sardines and that type of an invertebrates like krill, which are about the size of your thunder like big shrimp. Well, they are a big shrimp. Mind blowing die off of seabirds on their way from California to Alaska. We also seen a Cassini oculus with a half a million of them. They had all starved to death. These birds had flown the whole coastline and they had starved to death. The animals are starving. Massive die off of sea creatures from California all the way to Alaska, which is we're right across from Japan. Now, I went out and done expeditions, me and my happy, merry crew of. Uh, we're not going to sit idle boy type folks. Animals starving as food chain continues to collapse. Mass starvation event plagues the West Coast. And this is, um, 
mysterious cancer, cancer, killing sea lions on the U.S. West Coast, cancer, bones turning to mush, they're mammals, they're like us, so they're susceptible to cancer too. Inside are just masses of yellow cancerous tissues. Animals, we've never heard of this before, by the way, but animals dying at an alarming rate. No, no, they're emaciated on top of that. Even had Reactor 3's entire core been ejected into the water, the idea that it composed in the ocean is ludicrous. No. 100% death rates of baby seals. None have survived. Starving as the... Now, this has been basically still hid away from everybody. you got these headlines of people reporting on it, but the, the rest of the media has never went back to this story. Guardian, Pacific Ocean turning into a desert. The entire generation of baby sea lions dying. These are all emaciated dead bodies. Expect the same thing to happen again the next year. Sickened animals, unlike anything doctors have ever seen, they're eating themselves from the inside. Cancers, liver, pancreas, and intestines are shut down, infested with parasites, immune antibiotics. Catastrophic loss. So Stone thinks that this information is divert truthers' attention from the real issues surrounding Fukushima that one disaster never was a coordinated attack on Japan, rather. The majority of environmental damage outside of Japan came in the immediate wake of the attack. And at the most serious issue is all the expelled fuel still strewed around Reactor 3, which is the only one they're willing to emit. It destroyed the containment, so lethal is that debris that not even a robot can then survive proximity to it. Stone's report proving 911 was an act of war was available in the PDF format there. And when those reactors exploded, I knew, that because of my technical background, that there was no way that that could happen. Um, the company that planted it was called Magna BSP. Um, I mean, I have them nailed. I got a picture of the nuclear weapon that they planted in, in the facility. Blah, 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 blah. According to Jim Stone. Well, that's, that's it, folks. That's it. That's all of it. That's it and that's all of it. And so what the point was, we just wanted to come out and challenge their incredible, bizarre assertions and give everybody an actual, true depiction of what happened. And we've done that. Now, I spent like all weekend doing this and uh, trying to find equipment, the best bang for the buck, so to speak. And so we got a bunch. Uh, we'll be here tomorrow. And then um, the rest, I guess, on Monday or Tuesday. So we can get our Skype machine up and running. And we got more lights coming in so I can uh, get more. Because we haven't got the proper lights. And it's just for what we're trying. What we're going we're going to be transitioning now into full time interviews. And we got another line coming in somewhere, hopefully, I guess, if they don't show up tomorrow, it'll be next week. A uh, separate line and then a, a landline telephone. And let me see what else here. So we got um, preamps coming in for the microphone. And we got uh, something that's known as a cloud. What that does is it, it boosts your gain by 25 decibels. And that excites your microphone. So the audio is about to get extremely cool. And we're going to resolve our audio once and for all. And we got we just got so much to get to. We need, a, and we're getting it. We're, we're in good shape to get it. And so we're going to pick up the rest of the year now. Um, what else was it? I can't remember now, but anyway, we're gonna we got a lot of gear uh, to finish out. We still got a little ways to go. I've been looking at so much lenses, trying to find even a cheap lens that would do the job, and so I'm literally an expert on lenses at this stage, in one context, and lenses in soundboards, and so I still haven't ordered the soundboard. I'm gonna order that tonight. I, I hope. 
Thank you, Elaine, and thank you. Um, I hope you had a reasonable night. And, like, folks, if you don't know what I mean by that, Elaine is moderating, and she gets so many, she can tell you, you know, so many of these nuclear, the nuclear industry can't stand 60 people having a conversation. And they will come in and spam the daylights out of us. Hi to everybody. <laughs> Strontium is a blogger, by the way, folks. Hi, GT. Thank you, GT. Hi, I'm late again. Hi, Albert. Toxic. Hello, everybody. Brian and everybody I don't get to. Uh, Andrew and Alex. Albert. Rex. Hello, everybody. And so I've put in a lot of work to figure out this story of the weekend in my spare time. Hi, Rex. And uh, Hestia? I'm sorry if I got your name wrong, everybody. Bless you all. Uh, privileged to see you here. Hi, Smarty Pants. Hi, everybody. Chad, Richard, and anybody I don't get to, Bipolar, Tele, Hard to Find, Clink, and everybody that I miss, my apologies. I'm just skipping through. Just want to make sure I, I try to say the hi to many people as I can because I appreciate it. And Organic Slant, he's a blogger, folks. Hi, Trevlan. He's blogging Fukushima a lot for many years now. And uh, everybody I don't get to, my apologies. Robert, I'm looking for any last ones. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Elaine. This is what I mean, right? You got this friggin' industry is nuts. Can't stand anybody having a conversation. Well, because we're we're like all on am is I'm super honest. This is the internet, and if I try to bullshit or lie or just, I guess bullshit's a better word, that's gonna get picked up right away. And so I've developed this technique, and you've seen it tonight, where I just. All I do is I bring you all the information. And uh, it's, uh, I'm not going to waste my time on nonsense. This is uh, serious stuff, and it needs, we need to have those conversations. And I'm not always, uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to be a little bit spontaneous sometimes to keep the things happening. And I might be ordering in the problem with my dilemma right now is the microphone. This microphone is not the right microphone. And the right microphone is like $700, right? And so $700, that's for a lapel microphone, so we can get rid of this. Get, get that right out of the picture. But also get a super high-quality microphone. Uh, is ultimately what i got to do anyway. but. This microphone, I can use it for the Skype machine, but I still need to get another microphone and a soundboard. I need two microphones for the Skype machine. And we got, we got everything. We'll get it. It's not a big deal. Except for the, 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 the $700 microphone. That's like I'm, I'm starting to lean towards, but, you know, I'm better off get the other stuff, right? But that's something that I should get my hands on sooner than later because it's a, it's a waterproof microphone, but it's a real microphone. It's a production microphone, right? And it's just a little lapel microphone. You can, it's actually designed to go under your clothing, and you can hide it in your hair. It'll still pick you up perfect clarity. And so the prices have come down from a few years ago, $3,200. they are down to $700 now. I, and that's the cheaper one, but still, a, they're, they're rock solid. They're used in production. And so it's a little out of my range, that's all. And so there's no issues. I'm just having a good chat with everybody before I give it a night. And uh, let everybody know that I am good spirits. I am happy. I'm still busted up pretty good. I didn't get any rest, so I'm not sure. Uh, I shouldn't have done Saturday's show. That burnt me out. It pushed it too far for me. I need I need to take time off too, right? Because I'm just... But I, I haven't had no time off because I'm looking up all these electronics that I got to get my hands on 
and I don't have extra money to burn, right? So I got to make the right decisions. So I got to go out, each piece of equipment, I got to go out, watch the videos of YouTubers and find out if it's the right piece of equipment for sure before I burn the money and then go look at comparisons that they talk about. And so I'm totally exhausted from all these different types of electronics that I got to pick up to complete the mission. And we are on a mission, let's make no mistake about it. We're, we're here to, to take Nuki and drop it on his head till it's gone. Nuke is your enemy. Nuke hates all life. Nuke is your number one enemy. They've hid away. That's why we call it a cult. C cult is something that's hid away from you. And that's what nuclear is. Nuclear is a cult. That's the appropriate word for it. And it's a cult in the concept. Like we see the word cult used as a cult classic. Where everybody loves it. That's our cult classic. But that was once again designed to hide away the true meaning of the word cult is many cults in the government that are hid away. And that's what cult is, something that's hid away. And nuclear was hid away on purpose because it has no, no uh, redeeming qualities whatsoever. It's not harmless, it's not a, a benign or innocuous. It's not like a banana or a potato chip or walking in sunshine or getting on an airplane or sleeping next to somebody. It's not, it's not, it's not, it never will be, never was, never could be. And so the, the law is a vicious law. The law is an unreasonable law. It's a betrayal. It's an unbelievable, hideous, monstrous betrayal. And God bless everybody. That's it. We'll give it, a, we'll close the show down. And all I can say is um, I'm really excited about getting the equipment work and we'll get there. I'm just being extra cautious with the money that I got so we can get the parts we need, not the parts that we don't. And that requires a stupid amount of research, uh, but it's doable and we're doing it. And so it's probably gonna take me, uh, hopefully next week, we're gonna have that up and running. And then I can get more, uh, get some breaks and get be able to get take a break actually at that stage. Once we get it running, then life will become a lot, a lot more work, but it's awesome stuff. We're so looking forward to it. We're so privileged to have that. It's such a big deal now to be able to do something like we're going to do. It's so rewarding for everybody to be able to share their stories and for that information to be disseminated out to people that desperately need those confirmations. It's, it's a, this is a great thing. 219 are gonna take nuclear apart like it's never been taken apart before. We've been doing that for years. We've dissected it. We have found it wanting. Hugs for everybody. God bless everybody. We'll see everybody uh, tomorrow night for stream. God bless. <laughs>